Welcome everyone to a faceless session 39 of Call of the Nether Deep, where we are probably going to discuss starting 30 minutes later going forward. I uh, thought about it. <laughs> let's see. So, last time in our wonderful game here, I am definitely awake and the coffee is definitely working. Uh, we accepted a mission from Prolix at the Allegiance of All Sight to investigate a secondary entrance, possibly, to Kale Morrow, uh, located beneath the Life Dome. Uh, that mission was uh, taken up, thoroughly investigated, a very pleasant gnome who needs to talk to more people during his day uh, was met. Uh, there were some invisible stalkers waiting to ambush you at the Life Dome. And, yeah, that led to some questions. Uh, Ix remembered having encountered a familiar sensation when the stalkers were still hiding themselves, uh, and, which took the party back to the Suncut Bazaar to question a shopkeeper who uses one such creature as her uh, security guard, as it were. And she pointed you towards the Crystal Chateau, as one of the professors there uh, taught her and other students, presumably, in the way of summoning an invisible stalker to do your bidding. And that is pretty much where we left off, uh, heading back to the Crystal Chateau, both to report, uh, get the rest of your money, for the uh, hazard pay, and also be like, yo, Prolix, what the heck? <laughs> so that yeah. is where we will pick up, heading out from the shop Mystic Pursuits on our way back to the Sigil District, which, you know, looking at the map, is directly east of you. You know, fun fact, now that I'm reading this spell a bit harder, mm -hmm. I do not need to see my target location to cast Zone of Truth on an area. Uh-huh. Well then. I'm just saying, if we have to worry about people dispelling spells before I cast them, I can do it outside the door. <laughs> Pre-cast. <laughs> I mean, that's a I'm... good, it's a good thought. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Allegiance has things in place to notify people when stuff goes off like that. It's like a school of, of magic and learning versus, you know, a shop on a corner. I don't know how well that'll go down. Just, I'm just saying. Probably not a good idea to do the same trick over and over again, but <laughs> it's here. I mean, in all honesty, I 100% want to, but I also believe in my heart of hearts that Prolix has no idea what's going on, that it's the higher-ups that do. Probably, probably. If we could save it for the higher-ups. But, you know, then they'll probably definitely. Break. Then I'll probably, you know, I could be wrong too. Prolix yeah. could be the mastermind behind all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas looks doubtful. <laughs> Thorn just blatantly goes, I really doubt that. <laughs> Fair. Um, no, I don't think the zone of truth is necessary, but I'm also not going to stop Lucas from doing it if he chooses. Fair enough. I'll keep that in mind. Stars is like, I can give as much away as I want this time. <laughs> no one will know. I think I said it last time, but no need to worry about not having a poker face this early in the day when nobody can see my face. Cool. All right, so what are we waiting for? Let's get going, guys. We're on the magic carpet. We just got to get there. Oh, okay. good. Okay. So, uh, anything you are doing before landing uh, at the Crystal Chateau? Not that I expect us to be, like, attacked or anything, but is everyone good on, like, life? Yep. Oh, yeah. Alright, cool. 
In fact, I should still be invisible on the carpet with you guys. Oh. <laughs> this is great. Oh, uh, yeah, because that's a. Uh, that lasts an hour? Yep. Okay, yeah, that, that totally lasts for a good while yet, then. Because it did not take you an hour or anywhere close to it to fly from the Suncut Bazaar to the Sigil District. All right. Well, your group lands uh, in front of the Crystal Chateau, as you have done before. Uh, the entrance awaits you. Uh, uh, now I'm, I'm struggling to remember the name of the guard again. The uh, the halfling guy. Jor. 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 Okay. Thank I was you. thinking Jor, but I couldn't remember if that was like the nickname for one of Ix's relatives. <laughs> I was going to say, call him Guard again. Guard. <laughs> but yes, Jor uh, watches you land, uh, still gives you the stink eye the whole time. Uh, I'm obviously going to try to stay self stealthy through this. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Ben, and give me a stealth check just for the general scene here. Oh, not amazing, <laughs> but not terrible. Thank you. Plus but eight. Still, still aided by being invisible. Okay. Aided uh, by the eight. So, what's the plan when you land? To go inside. Alrighty. Uh, same as usual. Jor stops you, but go. Uh, but uh, calls for somebody to get Prolix for you, and Prolix guides you in. Uh, back to his office. Uh, some eventually the coffee will start working. Um, <clears throat> right. Ah, yes, you've you've made it back. Excellent, excellent. Come, come, come. And he he leads you back to his office. Uh, closes the door behind you. Like so, were were you successful? Thorn is. So Thorn, I want to say, is probably pretty bloodied looking, um, because I have 31 hit points out of 66, uh, and yeah. I did not ask Look, for healing everyone doing. I know. <laughs> on purpose, <laughs> because Thorn is going to, like, point at himself with one hand and hold out his other hand and be like, hazard pay. This is oh, why we asked for it. <laughs> you were also fighting in water, so surely all the blood washed off before it dried. But some of it would have soaked died. into my clothing, and it is still there, so... Yeah, I'd like to say we probably look like drowned rats, like, just a little wet still. <laughs> yeah. Plus, Thor was probably still bleeding once they got out of water. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, water makes it harder for wounds to close, so, you know... <laughs> He's a blood hunter. He bleeds all the time. That's <laughs> what he does. What? <laughs> so that's just, that's just normal. So, huh. Hi. Hmm. Yes. Uh, it seems you are right uh, to be cautious then. Uh, what? T tell me, what happened? Your bird didn't tell you? Wait, does, it, does it look like he genuinely doesn't know what happened? Make an insight check. 19. 19. Uh, he, he looks surprised and concerned for you. Alright. We... So it's, it's not my bird. It can only, only its master can understand it. And I imagine we'd want to hear from our own mouths anyway, regardless. So who's its master? I think it was the headmaster, wasn't it? I can't remember if I said it was the headmaster, but we'll say it's the other head. It's uh, one of the headmasters. Oh. Yeah, I think it's the one we didn't meet. Mm. <laughs> In any don't case, mind. oh. As you say, don't mind me as I look up what that name is while you recount the story. Yeah. In any case, uh, Thorn will tell him that we were attacked, 
by Invisible Stalkers. Um, and that there is no entrance to Kale Morrow um, that we could find at any rate. Uh, and that even the people, like, that we spoke to the guy who, like, you know, tends to the police, and he didn't really know why there was a rumor of it. So that's going to lead Thorne to saying, so we're suspecting that this may have been a trap laid for the Allegiance. And honestly, with the appearance of invisible stalkers, we have come to know that there is a person in the Allegiance who has specifically taught other people how to summon such creatures. And we're of the mind that this might be an inside job or maybe a former pupil kind of situation. Oh, that, that is very concerning. I, I, I'm glad you all got out of there safely. Oh, we're glad too. So I think payment should be the first order of business followed by speaking to the headmaster. Ah, uh, y yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, let me go bring uh, Al Ayn back to him so that she can report, and I will inform the headmaster of your account. Didn't Al Ayn um, go back before us? Al Ayn did. did go back before you, yes, that's right. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't bring the bird back. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine her just like flying next yeah, to us on the carpet, right? He, he's looking at each of you in turn, trying to see which of you the bird is perched on. <laughs> oh no, the bird left. Beth. To report back. Ah, very, very good, very good. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let, let, let us see then uh, what, what the headmaster uh, says about. Uh, compensation then, shall we? And uh, he starts to ask you to wait in the room while he goes to see the headmaster. Do you try to follow him, or do you uh, wait for him to return? We can wait, I think. Yeah. Dix won't stop him from going, but she'll give him a look like, don't take too long, and she's clearly not happy about it. <laughs> I'm going to follow him at least a little bit. Ooh, yes, because you're invisible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he, he flinches away just a little bit from X, but try, tries to play it cool, but he can't quite manage it. Uh, but yes, he slips out, followed by Ben. Uh, so, Ben, you can track the path that he takes to get to one of the headmaster's offices. Uh, not, not very far from the other headmaster you've been to. Let's see. Trying to find the name of that guy. That was in a, on a different page than what I'm looking at. We're so bad, we came back without a bird and without a person. <laughs> without a person? Yeah, Ben's invisible. We're down oh, a party member. Dude. <laughs> It's funny because even in my head, I was like, he's with us. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, if anybody asks, uh, he went to the bathroom or he's eating. He's doing Ben stuff. I don't know. I'm not nice. a keeper, man. The uh, the other headmaster was Headmaster Alacritos, the goblin. Uh, but yes, Ben, you follow him to Headmaster Cryon's office. Um, he slips into the office. Do you try to follow him all the way inside the room? If it looks safe enough to do so, like I could do it without struggling, then yeah, Ben's pretty dexterous. I think he could do it, so that would be the goal, yeah. Okay. Uh, he, it seems like out of habit, not because he thinks somebody's following him, uh, he opens the door wide enough for himself to slip inside and starts to close it behind him for privacy, you could make an acrobatics check if you want to try and slip in behind him. Dope monk shit. Here we go. Dope monk shit. You can do it. What's with the fives today? 
Come on, dice. All right, that's what I got. I got a 13. All right, well, let me check something. Also, I tried typing in roll a d20, and I accidentally hit roll a d10. That's not going to be helpful. He got a natural 10 on it, but that's not what I needed. Oh, looky, that's a 12, so a 13 is enough for you to slip in. <laughs> oh, <thank> goodness. <laughs> this morning is going about as well as our characters are having a day. Okay. I, oh, I am going, to us. I'm going to... I, I am missing again having multiple screens available to me. Trying to find the description of General Cry or uh, General Headmaster Cryon. Come on now, there's a picture of him somewhere. Well, anyway, that's that's immaterial at the moment. You see a gentleman taller than the other headmaster sitting behind his desk, and uh, Prolix uh, speaks to him, gives him uh, the report uh, that Thorn and the others relayed. Uh, the falcon is sitting on a uh, like a little bird, uh, set-aside bird perch for it behind the desk as well. Uh, there's like a, a tallish thing standing on the floor that looks like a uh, branch for it to perch on and it watches Prolix as he comes in uh, but yes they discuss terms uh, head, this headmaster seems a little stuffier uh, than the other fellow you met uh, he seems a little, little reticent to give you your group more money than he thinks you deserve but uh, Prolix negotiates on on your behalf since it does seem to have turned out as dangerous as you predicted and reported that it was uh, good guy prolix yeah uh, and eventually the headmaster relents and does provide another bag he goes to a a, a safe that he has in his room uh, he retrieves another bag of gold, tells Prolix uh, to pay you all a an additional 400 uh, for the hazards of the mission and for reporting back with uh, possible uh, elements within the allegiance that they need to take care of. When... Um... When Prolix told the headmaster about that, about the attack, did he seem surprised or, like, genuinely surprised? Or did he seem maybe like he expected it? Mm, he's got a little bit of an impatient poker face. You could make an insight check on him. Here's hoping I don't get another five. Much better. Nineteen. Okay. Um... Let's see. He doesn't seem overly surprised, but also he had gotten a report of what happened before Prolix came into the room. Um, you do see kind of there. There is a little bit of a quirk of his eyebrows, like when his he, like he believed his familiar, but now his familiar story has been corroborated uh, by by a second report. So he's like. Okay, fine. I guess that did happen. Is the is the uh, impression you get from his eyebrows? So he see he seems impatient and he doesn't want to give more money than necessary, but he does relent that this money was deserved or earned. All right. But he hands the bag over to Prolix, uh, who gives a gives a, a slight bow, uh, bows himself out of the room a little bit. Uh, 
heads back toward the door to head back to his own office. I might hang out here for a few minutes longer. Okay. Just to try to get out, mostly just to try to get out without Prolix opening the door. So if the headmaster leaves, I'll try to sneak out then. Or if he gets really distracted looking at the corner of the room for some reason, then maybe then. <laughs> his, his door mysteriously opens for a moment. It's like, ah, oh, more invisible stalkers. What if you get stuck in here while... Like, before you can... What if you stop being invisible before you can find a time to leave? <laughs> I have sure a backup don't. plan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited already. <laughs> I, I have theories about your backup plan, but I'll... I no, you do not. See what it would be. Oh, God. <laughs> Gispacho. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> let's just say let's hope it doesn't happen, because I only have the first part of the plan. I low-key hope it does happen. <laughs> so... Well, we shall see. Well, as uh, Prolix heads back to his own office, uh, Headmaster Cryon uh, goes back to whatever he seems to have previously been doing. He's going through stacks of paperwork, reviewing documents, that sort of thing. It's a little boring to watch uh, without context, but uh, he returns to his work while Ben watches curiously and kind of takes in the office. Uh, there, If you look around the office, there do seem to be a, a handful of, like, you know, uh, awards and recognitions, like, uh, you know, certificates and uh, other such things uh, presented to the allegiance or the school or to him personally. So he he has that kind of stuff on display in his office as one as one like him might. Uh, yeah, he continues to work. The rest of you, Prolix comes back into his office and he has a similarly sized bag of gold uh, to what he gave you upon accepting the mission. Uh, yes, here, here you are. The headmaster agreed on uh, doubling the pay. So this is another 400. Thank you very much. Said, sets it on his desk for whomever to accept. Thorn will take it. To divvy out later. So, so there was no indication of another entrance there. It was just a trap as far as you can discern. No, we searched the grounds and even dove into the water to search further. It couldn't find a thing. Mm, that, is, that is troubling. That is troubling. It is Where did this information often. come from? Uh, he holds up a finger and starts to open his mouth to answer, and his mouth is just kind of open as he is searching for a name. And he just kind of pauses in that position for a second. You know, I couldn't actually tell you where it originated from. It just kind of got to me through the grapevine, it felt like. Well, okay. Where did you hear it from? Did you hear it to, like, someone talking about it, or...? Uh, it was a... It wasn't a person that gave it to... or that, uh, told it to me. It was a note that was left for me that seemed, uh, believable. I'll just say DM is struggling for a second. You have the note? <laughs> He uh, looks around. His his desk is very messy. There are just <laughs> stacks of paper, and it is not well organized. Um, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. He, he starts looking through some of the stacks on top, but it seems like it's going to take a little while. 
How does it feel? How specific can I get with locate object? Let's I would see. like to locate conspiracy note. <laughs> hmm. That that seems a little. I guess that's not entirely subjective, but that might be a little <laughs> non-specific for that spell. No, that's fair. <laughs> the, the the nearest the nearest of any conspiracy note. Since I mean, you're un unfamiliar with the note in question. I wouldn't be upset with that either. But <laughs> no, that's fair. Uh, Imagine. I would have to. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I'm still reading the spell. Go ahead. I was just gonna joke, um, imagine if Prolix secretly is, like, a bit of a conspiracy theorist and you just get something, like, really meaningless, like, rats run the government. <laughs> like... <laughs> I can honestly see Prolix doing that. I really can. I, I was, I was, uh, imagining, oh, there's a, there's a note that's been passed around about, oh, somebody suspects these two professors are having a secret relationship. Uh, that's it, yeah behind the scenes. Lucas reads this with a deadpan expression. He's like, I see, I see. <laughs> Doesn't recognize either of the names, <laughs> but appreciates the T nonetheless. <laughs> oh, look, would you like some coffee, some tea? Lucas is like, no, I have it all right here. <laughs> oh my god. And it's all just stuff about the Allegiance. It's nothing outside of the Allegiance. It's all inside the Allegiance that he has all this information for no reason. It's like, no, nobody knows why, how this guy got his job. Everybody thinks he cheated on, on his uh, reports to get accepted. But yes, uh, he he d is not able in short order to find anything that would indicate where the news originated from or who gave it to him. We have a potential conspiracy on our hands. Mm with nobody able to indicate where it came from. Well, Prolix... Jess, can you remind me, because you have this in your notes, um, what is the name of the professor that uh, Shop Lady pointed us towards? Shop Lady pointed us to a professor. Let me go get that for you. It is... Wist. Wist. Okay, thank you. Um, well, Prolix, you just might want to do some digging into Wist and her students. If she has a disgruntled student that might be on bad terms with the Allegiance, that could be, you know, your problem. Or who knows, maybe not everyone in the Allegiance is trustworthy and it's Wist herself your problem, though. Unless you pay us more. <laughs> Sorry, I had, I had to look up uh, details about Professor Wist. Uh, so you, okay. I think I got what you were, you were telling him. So you, oh, you think one of Lymel's students? may be involved in this? Oh. That is... That is troubling. Well, we will certainly be looking into this. We do not need an element such as this uh, within the school or within the Allegiance. That is very problematic. See that you do. Being drowned isn't exactly exciting. Yes, no, I, I should imagine not. Sorry, I have the spelling of the professor's full name if you want it for notes. And you, Thank you. 
may have to be careful because a conspiracy within the school could be hard to look into. You know, if certain people are covering for others and so forth. Invisible forces looks, attacking people. He, he looks uh, pensive as he, he, he seems to be considering how to proceed. But yes, we'll have to find someone to look into this. Um, all right, well, for now, though, uh, I am uh, grateful for you all uh, looking into this matter for us, and I am, I am sorry it uh, brought you to uh, such harm as it did. But we have confirmed the lack of entrance, and you all seem to have made it out, and that's when he realizes that there's only four of you here. Uh, where where is your friend? Oh man, is, is he all right? I'm so tempted to run with this. <laughs> um, uh, no, <laughs> don't. I feel like Thorn has this expression, like he's so tempted to just take that question and run with it, and Ix actually like just quietly is like, "Don't, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't do this. I don't need any more of this." <laughs> Well, you did already give him a report and didn't mention that anybody had died or been grievously wounded. Man. Yeah, we would have mentioned that for more money. <laughs> 400 gold is barely enough to cover the cost of the diamond. So. <laughs> In, instead, uh, Thorn will just go, yeah, he got hungry, so he's uh, just out grabbing some honey flame bread. It's kind of a thing with him. Yes, I can, I can, uh, I recall this about him. Such a, a ravenous young man. You can say that. I'm, I'm a little surprised he's not a little more portly. He, he pats his own belly for a second. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> it's just so funny. Listen, if Ben were there, he'd be agreeing with this. <laughs> uh, and it's like you're right isn't it my metabolism amazing I'm surprised by it but yes uh, Ben meanwhile uh, the headmaster mostly carrying on as I described before uh, every now and then one of the notes that he writes kind of folds itself into an origami bird and flies out a window so okay. that's a thing. So there's an open window. How far down is it? Uh, it's a small window, a little higher up, just to let in sun, not for uh, gazing out at the grounds. But are we like, are we up on additional floors? Or are we on the first floor? Oh, uh, you are on the first level. Oh, screw it. I'll just go out the window then. That'll be the plan. Okay. Yeah, Ben. Ben is slender enough that uh, you have to climb a little, but you don't have to like skis to get through the window. But he's 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 got some ups on him, so he should be fine. Uh, go go ahead and give me one last stealth check just to see how well you can jump slash climb this wall and get out the window without making a racket. Or so or luckily, an acrobatics check, stealth or acrobatics. I'll do stealth. It's honestly the same bonus, but I was going to say, luckily, I'm still invisible, so even if I make noise, I'm just going to run. Valid. 19. Okay. Because my rolls today are 13, 13, 19, 19. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Uh, but yes, no, he, he is engrossed in whatever work he is doing, and he does not take notice. Later, sucker! Ben says after he's thoroughly down the street. <laughs> Unseen, the professor like looks up and looks around his room like like somebody like he's got eyes on him and he, he can feel it. But he goes back to work. He'll go wait by the entrance. All right. Uh, did any of the rest of you have further business with Prolix, or are you ready to be on your way? Not at this uh, time. 
Yeah, no. Arno would just tell him that he needs to take care of himself. And if he needs help, to, to reach out. Uh, and right. legs for legs. Allegiance has to pay. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I appreciate your, your concern. Uh, but yes, I, I will be careful uh, until this matter is resolved. Thank you. And he escorts you all back up to the front so that George does not throw a fit. Um, and you all are back on the grounds. So what from here? And now that you have uh, 400 more gold or 80 a person once it's divvied out. Can I add that to my sheet before I forget? Equipment, inventory, 80 more gold. I love it. Feels good. Money go up. Money go up. Well, now what? When Ben sees you guys coming out, he'd just be still invisible. He'd go, oh, hi, guys. Find anything yeah. good, Ben? Or were you in the room with us the whole time? I I didn't really know. Uh, no, I got pretty sneaky. I followed uh, Prolix over to the headmaster's room, and uh, honestly, the headmaster, at least that guy, he seemed on the up and up. So, um, yeah. He was a little prickly. I think Prolix is pretty nice. He talked him into giving us that extra money, so that was good. That's something. Yeah. Shall we? So... Heather, are you a little further away from your mic? Yeah, I just turned her up. Yeah, I had to switch my headset because apparently when I charged my other one, it it didn't charge. Couldn't tell you. But yeah, so I, I'm sorry. I have the mic like almost up to my mouth. Like, oh, I, okay. I can't. No, I'll my just output is turn you far off. Out of I'm sorry. Yeah. Gotta love when you plug stuff in and then it's like, haha, just kidding. I looked like I was plugged in, but I was actually yep. not. I, I know, feel I was that. like, you stupid, the light was on. I remember seeing the light. Like, <sighs> don't see the I light. Woke up a few days ago and my phone was at 11% battery. That was a good, that was a good time. Oh, fine. But yes. So, I believe it is getting late into the day, getting close to evening, supper time. We go back to the inn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thorn's gonna be on the All lookout right. for any messages from you know who. The usual. Ben will become visible again when he safely can. Excellent. All right, yeah, well, while you all are presumably in the air uh, between the sigil district, or between the chateau and uh, the foolish serpent, uh, Ben can drop the invisibility, or if he forgets to, it drops on its own uh, while you're in the air. So one way or the other. I also, like that I am, one. We'll go with that. Also, I am, I am curious, can I ask what your plan was, or are you going to keep that in your pocket for later? Oh, uh, I'm going to keep that one in my pocket. That's probably going to result in um, something terrible down the road, but I'm going to keep that one for myself. Perfect. I love it already. Let's go with that plan. <laughs> this is a good plan. I don't know what a plan is, but it's a good one. <laughs> okay. Uh, no uh, messages slipped under doors at the moment. Um but you all make it back to the Foolish Serpent. Uh, the evening is yours. Anything before getting ready to turn in? I will say, probably the rest of the party can tell that Thorn is getting impatient with the lack of communication from the Consortium. It's He's mm. not going to say anything on it, but it's like a... 
is increasingly getting irritated. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we did this as like a just for the heck of it kind of plan, but now Thorn's like, now I'm genuinely pissed. <laughs> <laughs> The Cobalt Soul was like one to two weeks before they contact you, and Thorne's like, it's been three whole days, you guys. <laughs> he is impatient. I thought Lucas was the impatient one. This is so fun. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... Uh, no. No. No plans tonight. Also, Stars, no. could you remind yes. me? Um... How much did the tattoo I wanted cost normally? I am trying to remember what I said. Um, do which we tattoo have it was it notes? again? We do uh, have it in notes. I wrote ah, it down. It's in the notes. Thank you, note taker. Uh... There's probably Should four figures. Notes. Should be in the notes. Maybe it's not. Uh, oh, uh, Thorn in is interested in... No, you did not give Thorn a specific note because you didn't want to come up with that number at the time. Ah, uh, that's right. Okay. It is at least is. four figures, probably in the upper end of four figures. Okay. Well, that still tells me something. Because I was like, I am... I'm, I'm presently at like 900 and some Not odd enough. gold. So I was like, if it's about a thousand, because I remember being at four figures, I am close. And I could maybe pick some pockets to get the rest of that money. <laughs> but <laughs> Wait, how did you get so much more gold? Gambling. He made a lot of money betting, yeah. It was, the... was that separate from the betting where you and I both lost a lot of money? Did I forget about something? Uh, I think it was primarily the gambling um, on what's his face in the ring. Oh, yeah. Because I went all in for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Irvin? Irvin yeah, yeah, yeah. Thorn, 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 Thorn won big on Irvin. Yeah. yeah. Also, one one of you made a, a good, a decent chunk of money on the card game that uh, Amelia got involved in. Arno did that. I also, besides in the notes now, so. besides losing on gambling, I haven't really spent money on anything in ages. <laughs> like, not gonna lie. <laughs> so, not been buying potions and scrolls like everybody else. No. Okay. Well, I just I lost a lot during some of that gambling, and I haven't recovered that much. So <laughs> I was genuinely surprised. Not gonna, well, we also got from we got paid from the allegiance twice now, which is nice. Uh, Pretty sure I added both of that. And then, did you need to purchase a potion of water breathing, or did you not need to because you already had one? I think I must have purchased one because I do have one, but I don't know. I don't remember. It's all good. I, it just caught me off guard. I'm like, I want some money. <laughs> I want money. Well, it's because Ben's tattoo is only a thousand gold. That's that's what's going on here. And, Whether or not you realize he, it internally. Unless he finds a way to lower that price. <laughs> I mean, it's probably two thousand gold by the time we go back. I mean, come on. Speaking of. Oh, that was yesterday's price. Today's price. <laughs> Speaking of. <coughs> Sorry, I had a bit of dust in my throat. Um. <laughs> But, uh, I need a vacuum. Um, speaking of, as far as what components would make this, this tattoo more affordable, um, I know you had mentioned Ruidium last time, but, like, what components does it normally take? And I wanted, I believe, the Life Well tattoo. If I recall that sounds, correctly. That sounds familiar. Um, that's a good question. I've never really considered what specifically goes into making magic tattoos. My biggest frame of reference is uh, Orly doing some Like stuff. gems, yeah. Yeah, so like I just, in that case, it was just valuable gem dust 
Uh, if you had already magical gem dust that would be, or a gem that could be turned into dust, that would be even more than just mundane but valuable gems. So just something, something valuable that could be turned into pigment, and for the magical ones, gemstones serve that purpose. That's fair. I mean, this is a very rare tattoo. Um, yeah, it is. So I would Trouble imagine character. that with that and with the idea that it's kind of like a built-in revivify, it's probably diamond. Um, never, never mind the book is like, oh yeah, characters at level 15 can start with a very rare item. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I guess my question is, if say I wouldn't be too particular on like what kind of gem, but sorry, you were saying. Yeah, my question is, if I were to buy components to make this tattoo cheaper, would that actually save me money, or would it still be like still in the four K range, even if it is lower technically with the tattoo? It would help, but. I don't think enough to make it 900 to 1,000. Okay. Okay, that's what all I had. My request, did you ever come up with a price for doing a plus what? two build witch claw tattoo? I, I did uh, ask you a question that I never got an answer to. Oh, let me go look at that side up here. Is how, how much do you have on hand actually at the moment? Uh, 488. And some change. I guess 498. I have one plan. Okay. Um, so, yes. So, if you used the, uh, the uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the item, the uh, Insignia emblem? of Claws. Ins insignia. Yeah, if you had the Insignia destroyed as part of it, it would be significantly cheaper to just get a plus one. If you want to combine them and get a plus two, um, it would, let's see. I would say, hmm, since it still requires the attunement, I would say a little less than the thousand. Uh, you could you could try to haggle with him or provide something more if you're able to, uh, but let's say it would be more like six hundred. Ooh, just uh, save up for that. All right, I'll hold on to this for a bit. Okay. I don't like the haggling, and I don't want to waste any time in session haggling when Ben literally would suck at haggling. So let's not do that. <laughs> but I'll just save up for that. Ben would be like, at the first number they say, that's the price? Okay, here you go. Alrighty. So we have potential plans and and dreams, hopes and dreams for tattoos. Uh, any other uh, evening discussions or plan making? Andy, I'll ask it here. Uh do we want to try that sending tonight? Do it. Or Yeah, 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 we can. Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Placeholder RP for later. <laughs> I mean, you you're also more than welcome to bring up in session. I don't know how long of a discussion it'll be, so... That's what I'm saying, like, I'm pretty sure it'll be more than just y'all. I think the discussion will be about 25 words long on each side. Oh, that's ours. <laughs> Ix, has the, <laughs> Ix has words on her side, because she'll be talking to Thorn face to face. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. And every time I turn Heather up, she's still quiet. It's okay, though, I still hear you. It's just, Sorry, I'm going a little more, a little more each time. I just want you up all the way this time. It's fine. My microphone. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did that like as I turned you up. Thank you. Okay. 
I will, before we continue, I will say if you do switch back to your normal headset at any point, please warn us beforehand so I can turn yeah, you back down. So. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. But, yes. Or if you do switch and don't warn us, I need it to be an impactful line is the first thing you say. <laughs> <laughs> I need to feel yelled at because then I'll turn you back down. <laughs> I actually, stars. I have a question. Um, before I actually change my mind about the tattoo thing, how long until mm -hmm. the rematch, the supposed rematch with Ty at the bowl? Uh, three days from today. In that case, I'm actually going to uh, once again come to all of you with a request. Hey guys, can I borrow a little bit of money? I want to get a really cool tattoo. It'll help me kick Ty's ass. How much money? Well, I, I need, I don't know, maybe like about 100 gold total. And if you guys split up, it's not so bad. It's really not so bad, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Mr. Arno would just start yeah. reaching into his purse. Like, Thorn will just yeah. give him the 100 gold. Thorn, that's so cool. I still need like two more gold, though. Uh, I, I guess I didn't do the math. 102. Though. 102. Oh, awesome. There you go. <laughs> if we're in a <laughs> private place, then we'll transform into hybrid form. And, like, go to offer Thorn a hug, but still wait and see if Thorn wants a hug. <laughs> I need to make a character check. And he's gonna, like, make a face, like, uh, uh, bear hug? He is a little upset that she doesn't get a hug. That's <laughs> stand, standing upright with his arms out to either side. I think Thorn's just gonna, like, hold up a hand and be like, that's, that's okay. You, you don't... Sending you a hug mentally. There you go. <laughs> All right, Ben will shrug and then transform back. Like, okay, thanks, Lauren. And then he's just gonna hop out the door if it's still business hours. He's gonna go get this right now. <laughs> ben T poses at Thorn. <laughs> like, no, it was supposed to be a hug. Okay. I uh, love it. <laughs> uh, ben has enough time. Uh, to head for the tattoo shop, since you know where it is now. Uh, you go and you find Brom. Uh, you can discuss terms with him. And he is able to, uh, he says, uh, if you come back tomorrow, uh, if you leave the uh, insignia with him, he can grind it down into what he needs and have a tattoo ready for you tomorrow. Excellent. And I'm going to come up with what that's going to look like, and I'm going to send that to you, Stars. Marvelous. I can't wait. Ben yeah, over he, here turning into a badass. He, he suggests coming around midday tomorrow, if you are able to. I now have six silver and nine copper. I am so wealthy. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have the coolest tattoo on the flock. Like, that's all the wealth you need. Ben would agree with you. Most excellent. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, will that finish off the day for us? No. Cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna... Um, it would probably... I, I guess it would probably be when we head towards bed. Like, yeah. in, in their room, probably, yeah. when this would happen. Um, but, uh, I guess, like, they're getting ready for bed, like, they're both getting their, their stuff off, Lucas is taking his armor off, piece by piece, and I feel like he's, like, slowly taking his armor off, like, slower and slower and slower, um, and then he uh, finally just kind of, without even turning around, uh, just says, uh, Arno, do you want to try sending that message tonight? Arno would um, blink because he was totally not watching Lucas take off his armor and then also getting slightly confused as he was getting slower and slower being like is this what's happening? <laughs> wow. But would um, just have a like yeah we can do it tonight. Do you know what you want to ask? Or are we still I get I pick what we ask. I I mean I have a couple of ideas, but maybe you can word them 
better. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. I thought it would be really easy to figure out what to ask. But uh, for some reason, it's not. Um... <laughs> I was going to say something like that. But... <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, it's delightful. It's delightful. <laughs> and very accurate. Yeah, but like it, when he started slowing down, he was like, ooh, and then it went slow. And he's like, what? Very and then he asked low. the question. He was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> very low energy tease." <laughs> it's a preoccupied tease. Luke is just something. <laughs> um, so I think yeah. Uh, if 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 they're good with it, um, he would he would finally like the last piece of the armor would finally come off because that's like when he t ended up timing the question too because he's like I've run out of things to take off. Um. <laughs> And I think he would, he would then, you know, turn around, um, and sit down on the bed, and, um, just kind of look at Arno, and, um, yeah, um, what do you, what do you have to do, um, what, what do we have to do to, 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 to do this? Um, well, I just take one of the scrolls, and then... Use it. I forget. There's nothing left in the process, right? It's just use the scroll, and then hopefully it works. Yeah, you just uh, you read the spell off the scroll instead of having it something that you've memorized previously. And I I retconned that you have seen an image of Garcia, so okay. you are you are at least somewhat familiar with her appearance and who she is. Yep, you know her name, you know what she looks like. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you'd be like, I just read off the scroll, and then if it works, I have about 25 words that I can send her, and that she can respond back. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, I haven't thought of 25 words to ask, so uh, I guess we won't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my questions so far have been single sentences. <laughs> and quite honestly, they're all along the lines of what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, correct. All, all of that is fair. <laughs> but um, you know, we can't we can't ask my mother what the fuck. Um that would that would yeah. no. <laughs> I just, I just want to know why she's doing this. Like I don't, I don't, I don't get what game she's playing right now. So you want to know why she's reaching out now? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think you see, like, several different uh, rapid-fire emotions flicker across his face, and then he just says, no. Okay. Do you want me to say that you say hi? Like, what what level of tone should I have for the message? Whatever oh, tone yeah. works to get the answer. Oh, all right. Should I say that you're happy to hear from her? Like, what? I don't... I mean, 
of course I'm happy to hear that she's around. I, I mean, I haven't heard a word in 20 years. It's it's great to hear that she's still alive. But I, what do you say in this situation? By the way, your son says hello. By, by the way, your son... misses you by by the way i wish i could say this myself but since i can't here's a message from a friend i just it'd be better not to say anything she's I'm... clearly focused on your family right now i don't think that's the case and i think that at least Saying some of that will let her know where you guys stand. Not knowing why she left or what the fuck is happening and 100% not taking her side in things. So I back you 100% whatever the fuck happened. But if it's been that long she she might also not know what the fuck to say. You know? So if you, like, leave the door open a little bit, it, it might give her more courage to say more. If you're just blunt, it, it might not have a big Well, then I don't, sure, whatever, whatever of that you want to piece together. Oh. I don't think Lucas doesn't look like he has it in him to compose an actual dear mom. <laughs> 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 but everything you heard when he was saying like this 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 sounded genuine so yeah <laughs> all right Hold on. give me like two minutes let me see what i can fit in 25 words i don't want to pull a jester okay Hi, Mom! I mean, not my mom, but, like, Lucas's mom! <laughs> Hi, Darcia! <laughs> oh, shit, I'm running out of words! Why are you... Kitty beat me again? to it. <laughs> you have two words left. You pooping? Did I just lose connection, or is everybody just no, quiet? No, no, <laughs> I'm... Um... Annie's composing ascending. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is Sorry. giving me time to prepare predictive responses. <laughs> Sorry if I interrupted. I guess that's one downside to not having anybody on camera. I'm like, am I alone? Oh, no. <laughs> all good, all good. Do we want to take a five-minute break? Because I kind of need to take a break. 
Go pee. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can go. Yeah, I can go Good pee. plan. All right, we'll be back. All right. So, yeah, Arno casts his sucking. And once he does and he feels like it's gone through, he would just have a... Hi, Dacia. It's Arno. Luca says hi. And he misses you. He wishes you two could actually talk. He wants to know why you're reaching out now. So, oh, Lucas, you watch as Arno casts this spell, uh, holding up the scroll in front of him. The scroll, once uh, Arno is finished uh, reciting his message, uh, the scroll itself uh, crumbles to nothing. But it doesn't seem like it was because it was unsuccessful. Um... Arno, you send your message. There is only the briefest pause before you get a response. It is... Uh, the voice is probably pretty close to what you might have expected. Uh, sounds just like a middle-aged woman that sounds like she could be related to Lucas. Sounds a little bit tired, uh, but not surprised. Ah, I've been expecting you. I am sorry we can't talk. Thanks for being there. And there's a little bit of a pause. Not what he wants to hear, but this is safest for us. And that's the end of the response. Arno would look up at Lucas and just have it be like, all right. She responds. You see, like, he's watching you. Uh, she said that she... Oh, wow, sleep sick brain. You forgot everything. Um... She said that she was... I posted it. Thank you. <laughs> Expecting us to reach out. And that she's sorry that you guys can't talk. And, you know, thanked me, but ignoring that. Um, she said it might not be what she wants to hear, but this is safest. For you, for you guys. That's all she said. I think... I think you see the smallest flicker of disappointment but I think more than that Lucas looks immediately understanding not in like an I get it way like a resigned understanding I think almost immediately We can send her another message. And what? She didn't respond to your first question. But what if she did? What if saying that this is what's safest is that 
what's safest is her having to go through me. But she didn't say I, I'm <laughs> Lucas is going to say this forgetting that there is a word count limit. I don't forget that there's a word count limit. <laughs> um, you know. Very good. She didn't, but she didn't, you know, she didn't say why she's doing this. She didn't say any, she didn't give you anything, Arno. She, safest. I, I know that. Ar Arno would put a hand on Lucas's arm and be like, she has one hard word. <laughs> to be able to try to respond. Which is why, if you want for some more clarity on it, you can send another sentence. Because that could mean a lot of things. It could mean that she hasn't reached out before because it wasn't safe to reach out before. It could mean that she's reached out now because through some weird fucking coincidences, it, she had intermediaries to be able to talk to you. Could mean that she's not answering because it's safest if you don't know. Just say. But that safeness is more likely the limits of the spell than necessarily a good thing. Also, I think I might have woken her up if she still responded. So. Oh, you you said that because she might have been tired. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you know it's because of um his conversation with Jasper that there are times where it's all wrong. Okay. Um I think um Arno is saying all these things and Lucas is listening. Um, but I think as Arno is, like, just saying, it feels like he's almost saying, like, whatever's, whatever he thinks might help. You know, like, it sounded, like, a bit like you were rambling towards the end, which is nice. Um, and I think that as he's, as he's saying these things, I think Lucas's shoulders just kind of slump a bit. And I think he just suddenly looks tired. I think, I think he just kind of gives Arno a little smile and shakes his head. Um, I think, let me, let me sleep on it, Arno. Maybe there's more we can do, but... It's a lot. Let me let me think about it for a bit. Arno would nod. And thank you for sending that message. I think I'd like to go to bed now. Is that all right? You want to bed? What'd you say? Do you want me to join you? you <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, 
world. <laughs> uh, not tonight. But thank you. He would sound. Just lean up and like kiss Lucas's cheek. Ah. Lucas is going to go to bed. <laughs> Arnold might go down and get a drink. Oh, I forgot I'm on push to talk. Um, I started being very dramatic. I'm like, wait, what's no, everybody's like too quiet. Uh, hmm. But yes, Lucas, it does not take you very long to drift to sleep. Like almost as soon as your head hits the pillow and you close your eyes, uh, like you, you're, you're just out and you have a dream. It is not a dream you've had before, but it has a familiar feeling to it. The dream is not very specific. It's kind of a flash of rapid fire scenes, almost like a, a montage, if you will. Um, if filmmaking and the French language existed in this world. Um, this it starts out in a very familiar place it is your childhood home and you can tell very quickly that it is during your childhood um the there's a lot to take in just things happening one after another um you see images of uh of some of the the crown's guard have come to your home and they're speaking to your father and uh, questioning him and you realize that your mother is not there uh, somehow you get the feeling this might be the day after the last time you saw her uh, but there's just other images of um, like her speaking to you and giving you hasty warnings uh, to not tell anybody about whatever it is you had just discussed with her and uh, her being, you know, cagey about things around when the Crown's Guard are around and just a number of things that just make you feel like she had to disappear or things were going to go badly. And it almost feels like some things that had happened in the past are connecting a little bit now. It's like you're still missing details, but something is there trying to explain it to yourself almost with information that you shouldn't have. And when you wake up the next morning, I would like you to roll two d20s and record the numbers that you roll. Okay. I am One is a nat 20. Beautiful. <laughs> Hopefully. Or it could be horrible. I don't know. Uh, the other is a 2. Also potentially useful. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> I did not have the Ironically, I did not have the foresight to go ahead and make a homebrew feat for this, 
but Lucas, you now have the divination wizard ability portent as a feat. I'll need to look this up. I don't know what that is. Just <laughs> that's actually friggin' awesome. That's really what? good. <laughs> what is, that? is that like a uh, a one use only thing for him, or like does he just have that feat now in general? He just has that feat now. Oh my god, so, I'll go, Lucas! I'll make feat <laughs> okay, so when and you can just call it portent. So, Lucas or Jess, uh, to explain, when you finish a long rest. You will roll 2d20s and record those numbers. And then at any point uh, until your next long rest, you can replace any, basically any d20 roll by you or a creature that you can see with one of those two numbers. Oh my god. Let me just say that 20 and 2 are like the best possible combination right. of numbers you could get. One yeah. That's so fantastic. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, a two. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. <laughs> I'll, give me a little bit here. I'll make a feat to put it on your character sheet for you. Yeah, no, that's okay. fine. <laughs> wow. And, let's see. Actually, what just is for... Lucas's mom? Fucking just, wizard, I guess. Jeez. Just for just for a little little bit of balance, since it's a, a free feat and not normally a feat, go ahead and make uh, Tony when you write it up. Go ahead and change it to one d twenty. But since you just had a dream, we'll go ahead and let, uh, keep those both of those numbers that you just rolled for today. So okay. it's just one instead of two. Yes, except for today, we'll we'll let Jess have the twenty and the two. It's it's the screen. first burst of magic. Particularly potent today. Yes. Particularly portent. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> God, that's so cool. Also, what the fuck, mom? <laughs> <laughs> so when he wakes the next morning, he feels like a flash of the future makes sense that he can change. That's so cool. That's so cool! <laughs> so, yeah, Lucas, you feel like an a bit, you a little bit better understand an ability that you've had for a while now. <sighs> but, the rest of you also uh, finish your respective long rests uh, much less dramatically uh, for better or worse although Thorn there is a note that has been slipped under your door overnight he definitely upon seeing it picks it up with like just to himself because it's not like anybody's there it will just be like fucking Finally. <laughs> He's gonna read it. Okay. The The message is very brief, um, but you do recognize the presentation of it. It is written in red ink. Um, it just says uh, to come to the meeting place for more information. The meeting place being the eclipse. The, the first eclipse, yes. Okay. Okay. Gonna go downstairs to meet with everybody else. Okay, good. I'm t honestly, for a hot second, I thought Thor was just gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna go. Let's go. And not tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thor has moments, but I don't, he's not that dumb. Not that dumb. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I didn't consider it. Not at all. <laughs> why, why would that ever cross his mind? Ah. <laughs> Gonna be the weirdest, uh, weirdest breakfast situation ever. <laughs> so what is the breakfast situation, Lucas? <laughs> I mean... He's probably up at some point. 
does that does he wake up early or does like that take him a while like uh he he wakes up with the sun okay wakes up with like a relative time frame okay cool uh is he up before or after arno andy oh i don't know how i don't know how long arno stayed up drinking Well, he might have a conversation with Thorin, but that depends on the later RP. About later what? RP? After session RP. Oh. So you can go, you yeah. can, you can rewind. If he went downstairs, have fun. Like, <laughs> I, I will say, we don't need to save all RP for like later because there's some things that like, I don't know what you're going to ask me. And therefore, it might be more appropriate to do it in session than rewind and then find out that, like, it's not actually gonna... It, then to find out that it would have affected things, like, you, you in mean, the course like, of the session, you know? You mean, like, when you were all mad at each other and then after a text RP, suddenly the next session you'd all made up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, it, I... Let's do I'm it. <laughs> okay. Um... Then at some point after the whole entire thing with the uh, sending, uh, Arno would go and find Thorn. He would check Thorn's room first. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's probably in there. I don't see. Yeah, he's in there. I don't think he had plans to be elsewhere that night. Mm. No, I did have to think about it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so Arno would knock on Thorn's door. He'd answer. Hello, would I... That's gonna say something witty. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> He's, I'm too tired for this shit. I'm too annoyed. Yeah, he'd probably try to be like, I come bearing a gift. And it would hold up a bottle of alcohol. That's never a gift I would turn down. Mm -hmm. What have I done to earn it? Um. What do you want? <laughs> Honestly, I have a couple of questions for you, but I figure they're easier over alcohol. He look. He he accepts the bottle, but he looks a little wary. I might uncork it immediately um, mm -hmm. and then step aside to let Arno in uh, and just have like a, okay, what kind of questions? Can't promise I'll answer everything, but I will hear you out. That is all I'm asking. Yeah, I think it comes a lot. I'm just curious. And I don't think I ever really found out the answer. Why are you that interested in looking into the Victoria book? In in looking into the what? Betrayer God. He does say that a little bit slower. Because, okay. yes, the door is closed, but, like, also, they are where they are. I am... simply trying to get more information to prepare... I think that, you know, we've been looking a lot into the Apotheon, trying to figure out what the deal is there, and we're sort of overlooking the Betrayer God's role in things. I mean, they're the ones that I fear we might actually have to combat in all of this in some way, indirectly or otherwise. 
think we've seen a bit of that at the Betrayer's Rise already. I want to be prepared. Has Thorin taken a sip of the alcohol? No, what did he put in this? <laughs> no! <laughs> he would have, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's that was just where my just brain went, too. It's just because Arda wouldn't grab the bottle from him until he actually had a sip first. Okay, no, that's uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, so we're just sharing the bottle back and forth. Is... Oh, wait, you asked yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, um... Come you did find the perfectly paranoid way to ask that question. So. I know. I, I did. I apologize. Except not really, because it's funny. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but no. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just gonna be like, um, that's it. Just wanting to check. Sure, it's fuzzy. Just wanting to be prepared. Yeah. You could call it paranoid, maybe, but I'd rather be over prepared than under prepared. If you know that, if if my hunch is correct, you know. In second, go for it. Seventeen. You get the sense, um, sorry, thinking of how to phrase this. You get the sense that he's being very trepidatious, but he's not lying. Maybe he understands that this is a really sensitive topic. He's a little wary of talking about it just because of that. Yeah. I just know that whenever <clears throat> Ix's previous ties was brought up, but when you talked about your <clears throat> hatred, I've been a little wary of them. Well, like. Ukatoa isn't a betrayer god. He is potentially the child of one. I mean, sure. He is. He's, he's related to one. He's the creation of one. But he's still not a betrayer god, and not as powerful as a betrayer not, god. Not as powerful, but still on the same bench. You know, like... He probably doesn't want a great thing oh. for, for the world. Absolutely, no, he doesn't. But I mean, I'm not scared of him like I would be of a betrayer god. What I was trying to say was that while I know that I have been very unconstantly, like, I do still trust you, and then I wouldn't want you to not feel like you could, you know, help me shit, because of that wariness, I don't know. I know we don't talk about it, so And because of that, yeah, he would probably reach into his like, bag and pull out a bunch of paper. I've been uh, compiling all the shit I know about. Well, this is specifically about Zaheer, because honestly I assumed that it was you looking into Zaheer. Um, but all references that I have of stories, songs that I know, I just going to get this for you. Because it would be good. You're, you're, um, 
I don't know if your mic's like a little far away from you. It's not picking you up as well, but it's getting a little harder oh. to understand you. Sorry. Um, yeah, he. I put the phone down to roll the dice, and I didn't put pick it back up. So I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he has a pile of papers and being like, "I um compiled all the information that I have on uh, the tray god. Oh, this is specifically the gear." Because I thought you might be looking at him specifically. Uh, any reference that I know of from like stories and so wrote down for you for your research. And you're holding this out to him? Mm hmm. He, um, he reaches to take it those like fingers are a little reluctant almost to do so um and i want to say the expression on his face definitely shifts and maybe to a point where like i think arno could see that like beyond the humor that, you know, he often has and shows that he's let his guard down in some respect. And that his guard has been up for a very long time. Um, not only around Arno, uh, but... Mm -hmm. And he looks genuinely surprised and touched that you are entrusting him with this and that you went to this effort for him um if you wanted to make another insight check at this point you could oh okay nine nineteen plus four twenty three twenty three Oh, perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna just... one little thing. Oh, secrets. I wanna know! Is, is this in the recording so that viewers will be privy? No. No, the camera is focused <laughs> on roll 20. Um, but I will... <laughs> I will uh, take a screenshot for you, stars, and send it to you uh, in a moment. Marvelous. So. I just wondered since I heard the typing. I know you had mentioned previously uh, checking DMs on your phone instead of your computer during recordings. Yeah, <laughs> since everybody has their camera off anyway, I just, you know, was like, fuck gotcha, it. Gotcha. Nobody mm. needs to just see our icons lighting up. <laughs> so. <laughs> <clears throat> Where are feats in D and D Beyond? I'm also gonna send that little screenshot to Kitty. Cause what she is gets this minor shit? That doesn't make sense. I know it's terrible. <laughs> 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 Fine, just save it for later for the for the sake of the story. Uh. Guys, I'm so excited about this. Glimpses of the future begin to press in on your awareness. Oh, that's looking so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is about to be insufferable, everybody. Great. <laughs> Woo! I love Tony's enthusiasm. Like, yeah, I knew, really I knew you were going to react like that. <laughs> I say, as Lucas probably says, absolutely nothing to anybody. See, all I'm imagining is, like, in the future, like, Lucas just using it as a way of flirting, like, I foresee us going to bed tonight. <laughs> wow. I will, um, oh, sorry. What were you going to say, Andy? Sorry. Oh, I just said, because he would. That's it. Oh. <laughs> um, 
So to bring things back on track, uh, I will just say that after that little vulnerability in taking the papers, um, Thorn just has like a thank you on it. This, uh, you didn't need to go through all this trouble, but thank you. Yeah, you read. Of course I did. You're my friend. I know we don't spend nearly as much time together as, like, you know, I do Gallus, Dandy, with a Lucas. And I don't want you to think that just because, like, mm, can't flirt with you, or you're not attracted to me, that, like, I don't Oh, I find you about... very attractive, but that's beside the point. Oh. I was trying to make a point which I was attractive. Flattery. You would be great. I'd be sentimental. Sorry, yeah. nervous habit. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate your friendship. All, all of your friendships. If you need anything, just let me know. If you need more than what's in here, try to do it for all the betrayer gods. No, I... This is a good start. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Um, I might... I might take some time to read through this. Bottles, you It's a gift. <laughs> Red. You probably would just give them away. Head out. And this is the reason why Thorn doesn't just immediately go to the first eclipse. <laughs> so, <laughs> without a word to anybody. <laughs> he is occupied. <laughs> Not exactly what I meant, but yeah. Yes. Did this happen in the morning or the night before? The, the night, night before. before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still fun. Arno comes back to the room. Lucas is passed the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yup. It's fascinating because I don't think he often is. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, Arno is looking like. Oh. Buddy. If Arno gets close enough to look at Lucas's face, you can kind of see his. Uh, uh, eyes kind of moving back and forth beneath his closed eyelids. Very clearly in a dream. I don't know how close you would have to be to see that. I'm not going to say that Arno is like creeping on Lucas and just getting like super close to his sleeping face. <laughs> but... <laughs> trying, to, trying, to, trying to discern, are you actually asleep or are you faking for me? <laughs> I can see check. Well, that makes it way more feasible, actually, now that I think about it. So yeah, if he if he does get close enough, uh, the eye movement is the rapid eye movement is visible. As long as he's not, you know, making any sort of like that it's a nightmare. Yeah, no, he's not uh he's not in a cold sweat or crying out or anything like that. So back to the morning? Mm 
Yep. And okay. Back to the money. Thorn goes downstairs to meet with everybody else. Are we all up? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yep. Ben is already having third breakfast. Oh no, I'm not going to wake up early for breakfast. I'm just going to take longer eating it. <laughs> He's just had three bowls in the course that everyone else has had one. Mm -hmm. Still third breakfast, technically. So Lucas as is eating at his food, but he's eating it. <laughs> Lucas looks well rested for once. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Thorn will um, sit down with everybody and then be like, "Well, consortium finally fucking picked up. It's about time." They want me to meet them at the first eclipse. Didn't give a specific time, so I might just get it out of the way if we're not doing anything else I have an appointment today but you can you know I can go do that separately I'm just gonna go back to the tattoo shop it's gonna be pretty cool you're gonna you're gonna actually get a tattoo spoilers what are you getting where are you putting it at Ben doesn't say anything, he just continues to eat. And he just looks at Ix like, and he shrugs. <laughs> he wants to make it what a surprise. I, <laughs> I think the only surprising thing is Ben getting a tattoo on his face. I think that'd be the only thing I'd be surprised about. In oh yeah, that'd be tattoo. really cool. I can get it yeah. to say damaged all the way across my forehead. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ben, please. I would encourage you do what makes you feel right. And Ix is just gonna have the biggest shady grin like, oh my god, he just might. I know <laughs> you're, you're impulsive, but please, please do not do that. <laughs> it becomes a minus two tattoo. Ugh. Just had to include the picture. <laughs> yep, couldn't let that one go. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's a gif. Even, even better. It does say that in the corner, but I did still expect it to be a photograph. <laughs> All right. Anyway. The panda is now white and green instead of white and black. So Ben is going to get his tattoo. Thorin's going to go to the first eclipse. Did we have any other pressing things to get out of the way today? Not that I recall. I think, uh, no. I think Lucas might spend some time in his room. Okay. Arna? Mm, nope, he did the forge, so okay. he's pretty quick. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna go to the first eclipse after breakfast. Oh, do you need backup? Nah, I should be fine. I've been here a few times. Okay. If we don't see you by noon, should we start looking for you? Hmm. Probably. All right. I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'll just stay outside. I'll just. I won't go home like we did before. It's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are like across the street, and if anything does go weird, I can like message you then. Perfect. That's what we'll do. So this is now the fourth of the month question mark uh yes, yes it is okay cool. it is a beautiful grisson morning see so yeah, when i walk in is it the same usual dragonborn bartending ah yes so uh oh sorry my 
I should change what my uh, push to talk button is because I it keeps. Actually, no. Both of the ones I usually use will interact with things while I'm on the browser, but oh well. Um, yes, so you head to the first eclipse. Let me move the quill there. I just have to release my push to talk first or crazy things happen. Um, but yes, uh, you arrive. There are uh, there's one other kind of shady looking patron sitting at a table, but the blue dragonborn uh, is at the bar still and uh, notices you enter. I do want to ask a question real quick. What's your question real quick? I feel like every time I enter this place, there's like one shady patron in the corner. It's yeah. not like the same person every time, is it? Make a perception check. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was really good. If it is, I totally fucking know. Um, I just need my sheet to completely load because it's glitching out on me uh, suddenly. Hold on. It's like not showing the skills specifically. Let me reload. Uh, that is a 22. Uh, 22. One second. I meant to be on a different part of this page here. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, yes. Uh, it you do realize that you keep seeing this same person uh, like in a different corner of the bar each time you're there. And they're dressed differently each time, but you recognize the posture and some of the features that are visible. Uh, it is a gnome, uh, appears to be a woman, and they are very pointedly not looking at you directly. Okay. I will not uh, make it obvious that I, like, notice her or anything. I'm just going to go straight to the bar as usual, sit down, order a drink, and uh, as I do so, say to the bartender, so why was I called here? Uh without looking at you as the theme of the visit so far it seems um bartender goes up to the wall that you had noticed the first time you were here that is decorated with a number of uh like lids uh from ale barrels that have like the the names and labels painted on them uh there is one i don't remember if you had noticed it specifically uh before there is one what was the app that uh this is a terrible push to talk button one second there's one that has the symbol of the consortium on it i mean we were already aware of that because yes. of the red moon okay yes yeah i couldn't i was trying to find the description of it again and there's a couple of places it could be which is obnoxious um but yes, he does go up to the the Red Moon Ale or whatever it, it whatever it was called, um, acting like he's you know retrieving uh, an actual barrel of ale. But as he's over in that area, he just casually reaches up and presses down on the Red Moon lid, and a part of the wall opens up just enough for somebody to slip in, da, da, da. and he moves aside for you. I will get up and start to move towards the entrance. I don't know how far this will put me from Ix, but we're oh, we're going. So <laughs> excellent. Uh, you slip in. The door closes behind you. It is not. You're not, you don't have to go down like a long corridor or anything. It's a fairly small 
uh, chamber hidden behind this passage. Um, but uh, the room is not decorated or anything like that, but it is lit uh, with some red, a couple of red lanterns. Uh, and waiting for you, sitting on a stool, is a red-robed figure who you have seen before a couple of times now. Uh, there is a spotted gray tabaxi uh, waiting there, seated with his arms crossed. Oh. Well, hello there. Uh, so, we meet again. Uh, what was your name, Mr. Th Knife in the Dark? Thorn. Thorn, very well. So, you have expressed interest in helping out the consortium. Well, we have a job for you if you are interested. I very well could be, though I'll want something from the consortium in kind. Naturally, naturally. Well, an organization such as ours is always in need of money. So, we have a job for you and any help you can muster uh, to assist a, an associate of ours. Uh, let's see. What was his name? What was your name? Okay. Um... The owner of the Lux Run is a friend of the Consortium, and he has requested additional security after whispers of an attempted heist coming up soon. From what I understand, they recently reinforced their security, and it seems the Veil wishes to put it to the test in a uh, brazen act of robbery. We wish you to prevent this. So you... Sorry, I was distracted by being a shit poster. Um... <laughs> I just had to get that out there. <laughs> Because <laughs> I really it took everything in me not to have Thorn just immediately be rude to Ty. Um, so you want us to rob somebody? Am I getting that right? Ensure no. robbery goes off the hitch? Don't rob somebody? Quite, Wait. quite the opposite. You are to prevent a robbery. Prevent a robbery. Okay. All right. I don't see any reason for why my companions would be opposed to such a job. What are we preventing from being robbed, however? Just money? Yes, they, uh, they commissioned a new vault uh, fairly recently. And that is where all of their money is kept that is not on the f out on the game floors. So we believe the Vale is going to attempt to empty their vault. Now, I just... I am vaguely confused. Because at least from what I knew, you know, the consortium was not necessarily an organization that obeyed the law. Why? Do oh, you the care? law has nothing to do with this. We uh, simply, a friend of ours is going to pay us a lot of money to keep the rest of their money safe. But why would they go to you about this and not hand a board or something like that? 
if they thought that somebody was going to rob them. The hands of Ord do not provide uh, casino security. I'm sure you can imagine. They, they have other matters that they must attend to, I'm sure. All right. Well, certainly a job that I think we could handle easily. Also, I'm sure Edema does not want uh, the city guard overly aware of the inner workings of her establishment. Of course. I can understand the need for sub t subtlety. And in return? Let's see. Uh, Ty goes over the terms that I am rereading right now myself. Um, so, for accepting, uh, he has 250 here. Um, the casino will be paying an additional 750 for successfully capturing the thieves, a portion of which will be handed over to the consortium, and the rest is for you and your associates to keep. Thorn looks um, vaguely disgruntled with that. Um, and probably when he's told, like, the money, even though it's a lot of money, um, is just going to go... I haven't been trying so hard to get in contact with the consortium for money. I can take jobs from anyone and be paid. There are things you have access to, information I need, that I'd much rather have. Ty gives you a, a measuring look. Uh, make, let's see, I don't know if this is necessarily intimidation. You can make a persuasion check or you can try intimidation if you feel it's appropriate. We'll go with intimidation. Okay. Might get you slightly different results. 18. Okay, let me make one check here myself. Okay, okay. Uh, he takes in your counterpoint. Uh keeping his expression schooled, although you see a little little crack in his poker face. Um, my apologies for being uh, so presumptuous then, uh, Mr. Thorne. Um, what is it that you do wish of us in exchange for your services then? I want to know what the consortium may have on the Betrayer Gods. In particular, Zahir and a temple to the north. He and looks. I know good. quite a bit about this already. I don't want repeat information. <laughs> I want to know where this temple is, and if you can't says, tell me that, then I don't. He says to the, he says to the NPC and to the dungeon master. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, this is this is like Dag uh, Thorn just being like, I'm I'm done playing around. I've searched in many places. Like, if you can't help me, then I don't want to help you. Um, 
which is basically how he's gonna finish that off and and saying like if you can't tell me anything i don't already know then we don't have a deal okay he looked a little taken aback since he expected you to ask something about probably ruidium or kale or something <laughs> like that uh so that your answer gives him pause and he ah he already had pause though um and he has he has to think for a moment uh to consider how to respond to you as the dungeon master does the same thing let's see i do not personally have the information you seek, but I can inquire of our scholars to see what they can give you. If that is the payment you require. It is. I'll take the money as insurance in the meantime. You will take the money if you are performing the duties, he responds. The heist is believe is suspected to happen tonight, so I would like an answer from you, much as I know you would like an answer from us. We'll ensure the vault isn't sacked. Good enough. But we'll hold you to that. And I'll hold you to providing me with a suitable answer. By the way, have you accepted mm -hmm. the challenge? <coughs> I yes! <laughs> I had to. <laughs> Thank you! Yeah. I'm over here like, don't say anything, Heather. You're not there. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And I was like, please, dear God! I mean, there's a reason I wanted you to have this interaction. <laughs> but I didn't want to steer anything a particular way. Uh, he he uh, he stops whatever, whatever motion he was going to do. He just turns to meet your gaze. And squints at you a little bit. I was planning to ignore it. What's it to you? Oh. Well, I guess that does suit you, given... Well, I've mostly seen the back of you already. Eyes narrow further. Thorn, you have just become my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Now, out of curiosity, is this like you think he's beneath you, or are you scared that he would beat you in front of everybody? He seems like he's biting back some words. I am not afraid of skinny little Bernard. I simply have more important things to spend my time on. I'd like to insight check him. Go ahead and insight check him. It's a 17. It doesn't feel like he's afraid, but you've definitely insulted his pride, which he definitely has a lot of. Does he seem like he has contempt for Ben? Mm-hmm. 
from the limited interactions you've had and this conversation, you don't feel like he has contempt for Ben, just contempt for the idea that Ben is stronger than him. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Either way. In any case. And also, he doesn't like the way this, this exchange is going right now. Oh, fuck him. Um... <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Thorne's not here to make people comfortable, let's be real. <laughs> um, as well established. <laughs> uh, but Thorne will just look at him and say, You should accept the challenge. He doesn't say anything to that immediately. That's okay. Thorn doesn't need a response. As I, I keep forgetting I have to let go of my button when I switch tabs. Um, oh, that's what it's doing. I'm, I have control as my push to talk button. So when I try to switch tabs, it just selects that. So now I have two tabs selected, but it doesn't switch my view. Um, let's see. I'm just glad, glad scrolling with my touchpad is not like a scroll wheel on a mouse. It doesn't zoom in on the web browser window while I'm holding control. Um, uh, instead of uh, answering to uh, any of your prodding, uh, he simply says, ask for Captain Ane at the Lux run this evening. Uh, A-N-A-E? Uh, Captain Nadosi Ane. That's uh, N-E-D-O-S-I is the first name. Last name is A-N-A-Y. I was so close. All right. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> no one asked, but I want you all to know I can't spell worthy shit. Well, I think less of you not at all when it's Matt Mercer's proper nouns. So uh, with that Thorn will nod. Um, was it was there any payment up front? I can't remember. In the course 250 of gold. 250 for taking it and then the casino will pay you a bunch that you are expected to deliver a portion of to the consortium. Okay. So he is giving me that 250 now? Yes. Okay. So I, I will take that money, um, and I will go to meet up with X outside. The cat man is highly perturbed as you leave. <laughs> Good. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so as I meet up with X, uh, Thorin will just go, you will never believe who I just ran into. Oh, goodness. Who is it now? A certain scared cat. No. <laughs> and he has a job for us. Well, at least it confirms he's with the Consortium, which we already assumed, but... Wait, oh, you yeah. let him go? I'm not going to take that from Ben. Well, not kill him, but any idea where he's going? I don't think he's going anywhere. He gave us a job. Yes, but it doesn't mean he's going to be our main point of contact. Oh, he sure Speaking as hell will. What kind of job does the consortium have for us now? It's not another child, is it? Because I'm beginning to wonder. No, no, actually, I think... Uh... Arno might be interested in this. Um, that vault his sister is uh, installing. There's a heist plan. Well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it when we meet up with everybody. <laughs> Ix will look a little confused and then go, okay. Well, let's go then. And she'll, she won't press him for any information since they're in the middle of the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, so we'll meet up, I suppose, at the inn. Because uh, that's where most everybody is, except maybe Ben, who is getting his new tattoo. But obviously, we'll wait for Ben. For sure. Ah, yes. So yeah, so midday, Ben, you're heading for Grom's tattoo shop. Indeed, a Rooney. All righty. Okay, yeah, you get there. Uh, Grom is uh, ready for you. He seems to have everything prepared. Um, were you still wanting to work out specifics of the design? I, I have it in mind, and it's more or less in that what I sent you. I don't know if you read that full description yet, but I actually put it in that. Um, and I will save that for the big reveal. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Let me just take a quick peeky peek. Oh, I like it. Okay. Yeah, I saw I saw what you had uh written directly into the dm i hadn't read the full description that you sent me but i have now okay so uh he has all of his materials prepared uh the half orc half elf uh invites you to have a seat in one of his chairs um ben looks at the needle and he says it's okay i can bear it He looks at you a little, <laughs> a little quizzically, cluing in that you're making a pun, but he he is lacking some of the context. Also, that is that is a fantastic gift. Uh, but that aside, uh, he gets to work. Uh, he he discusses well. He discusses with you first. Uh, Actually, I don't know how to how tattoos get. He's probably worked out the design with you before you came in to actually get it, uh, rather than same visit. But uh, he gets started on the design. Uh, how well does Ben bear pain? Well, my com is a plus two, so above average. Okay. Uh, and from what I understand from infographics and stuff, most of where this tattoo is going is one some of the less painful areas uh, to get ink. Uh, so yeah, Plus, it's... I, I guess it would be considered magical piercing, but I was going to say if it were a normal tattoo, I probably wouldn't even feel it. <laughs> <laughs> fair point, fair point. Yeah, I wonder if Ben can even get a normal tattoo. I was going to say, I don't know that he could. <laughs> Regular piercing damage does nothing to him. You'd have to have to have a silver needle. Uh, but yes, so it takes uh, takes about an hour there, uh, basically the time of an attunement. Uh, but he gets the design drawn on you. It's an odd sensation, a little uncomfortable, but not as bad as maybe you expected for your first tattoo. Uh, and at the end, uh, he finishes wipes wipes down the skin uh gives you some uh, some uh care instructions for the next uh day or so just to make sure it, you know nothing messes it up or you know don't want to get any infections or anything like that uh, that he he asks you uh what you think of it uh, brings you a mirror so you can get a, a better look Ben just goes, that is awesome. <laughs> and he's super excited. Marvelous, marvelous. So is it uh when when you leave the uh leave the shop, is it covered or visible? Oh, we're gonna put it under the cloak. Okay, okay. It's gonna be covered. Marvelous. It's gotta have a big reveal. All right. So yes, Ben has successfully gotten his magical tattoo. 
Mm -hmm. uh, no longer is carrying around a uh, questionable symbol of any betrayer gods. And, Perfect use. And it is it is getting about time for second lunch. Ben will just stroll his way back into where we're staying. And he's, oh, hi, guys. How'd it go? He gets a huge grin across his face and then suddenly does his best Edward, Edward Elric impression and throws the cloak off, revealing his arm, <laughs> which, because he doesn't actually have sleeves underneath it, um, under his cloak, you can see around his, uh, uh, his entire arm is now tattooed. And what it actually is, it's a oriental looking dragon that starts with the tail at the shoulder and coils around his entire arm with its jaw open wide just before his hand. And instead of being like a solid color, it's actually the scales are filled in white with little splotches of black. And then there's two black splotches around his eyes. And what he does is he makes sure there's nobody around to accidentally hit. He does a few dope monk like uh, kind of attacks, you know, poses or whatever. And as he does this, the dragon tattoo lights up and dances between his arms, moving between his limbs. And you can see as it extends outward from him. Um, so it's kind of like he's punching in the air, like 15 feet away from him. And then when he's all done, it goes back to coil around his arm again. Ix's jaw will drop. And she'll just watch this display and look back to, to him and go, I didn't want a tattoo, but now I think I want a tattoo. Orin will just go, well, damn, you're really earning that Dragon Warrior title now. Yeah, that's what I called it. It's a Dragon Warrior tattoo. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. I love it. Way better than your last tattoo. <laughs> Wait, I had it. Did you guys have something put on me while I was sleeping? No, that's the, the joke of our of the group's temporary tattoos. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the stars. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the one that I forgot to use and went to waste. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you've already used this one more. <laughs> womp, womp. Womp, womp. Uh, now I'm sad that my face is not visible. Uh very good. Oh, so wow, that was back at the. That means the caravan stop was in July. Lord. Oh, boy. Yep. Come a long way since uh, Jorhas. Yeah, I heard that. I was <laughs> I was trying to figure if that was my phone or somebody else's. That is mine. It's always mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just poor bass. <bastard. laughs> It's me. <laughs> I, I usually put my phone on my bookshelf, so, like, if it vibrates, it doesn't, you know, the mic doesn't pick it up, but I frequently forget, so. <laughs> it's all good. All right, cool, so Ben shows us his tattoo, and with that, Ix will kind of look at Thorn, and then look back to Ben. Well, Thorn has some interesting news for you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, um, so... Hopefully, your little uh, rival will accept the challenge. Might have had a opportunity to speak with him today, and he did say that he uh, he was planning on ignoring it. But I made sure to needle him plenty. And if he doesn't accept the challenge, and he is a coward. We may know where to find him. Ben just takes a seat and he leans back and he does like the finger tapping thing and he goes, Excellent, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the most chaotic thing I have ever. <laughs> also, he gave us a job, which looking at Arno will be like, uh, How do you feel about... You know, ensuring that your sister's vault remains not broken into. Uh, 
I would love to see her face when I tell her that I'm the one they hired to help. <laughs> well, I have... But why does the consortium hear about the vault in the casino? Oh, I'm sure that'll be a fun part of waiting around. Apparently, consortium has links to the Lux, so maybe the Lux funds them in some way and this is them repaying. They were a little dodgy with the answer other than they were friends, essentially. Uh, How much were they planning to pay for this? Well, they, they gave... Knowledge? What was that? Are they interested in exchanging knowledge that you're seeking? I've made my questions known to them and they will hopefully be able to drum up some worthwhile answers. It's a lot to assume from this type of group, but, but go on. Yeah, but they did give me money as well. Two fifty up front and I will Plop that pouch down. And uh, 750 from the Lux if we successfully protect their vault. They... What? Uh, it's a casino, Ix. They make a lot of money. The casino We're does probably that. protecting at least 10, if not like 100 times more. Then. Right, and when is this supposed to happen? Tonight. For the love... Do you know how long it takes for heists to even be planned? Well, we're not planning a heist. We are planning to protect no, it from a heist. <laughs> we aren't, but... Tonight, they, that's not any time to... Recon anything to set virtually... Okay. So they gave me the name of the captain, yada yada. I'm not going to go too in depth at this point. Um, I will give the party all the information I have regarding our contacts, um, who are to speak to, etc. Uh, just that we can go ahead and maybe meet with those people now. Let's do it. Sounds like a plan. Oops. Anybody have last minute things before going to the casino? Arm armor is on to the casino. Hooray. Armor is on, but feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, since um, we know that Ty is the one that gave us this quest, I think Ben's mm -hmm. actually going to spend a little bit of time with his disguise kit. Uh -huh. And maybe up the Gaspacho disguise to be a little bit more disguisey. <laughs> so, because that'll last longer than um, disguise self. So, I want a disguise that'll last more than an hour. And maybe I'll use disguise self at some point if I if we see Ty. But I don't want Ty to know yet that I'm involved in this. He doesn't. Am I remembering? Does he know that you know me, Thorn? Um, he might be able to draw that conclusion. I didn't distinctly say like Ben's my friend. But, like, I would think the implication is there, that we know each other. Right. I might still try to keep that t cover, though. Let's yeah. let's disguise up some Ben, and then, yeah, I'll go in incognito. Also, oh, or... everybody should just remember to add 50 gold to their character sheets. Just oh, yes, it. thank you. Yeah, I will forget Yay, that. gold again. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Ben Ben has his mundane disguise, but then can magically disguise as himself if he needs to reveal himself. He just pulls off the mustache. It was I! The whole time! Okay. Well, this is the mission I had brought up last night as the uh the do we want to say we did and then not actually mm -hmm. um so to sum up uh the casino mission which 
is titled When Luck Runs Out in the book, which I, I enjoy that. Uh, you speak to security captain Nadosi Ane, who is a brusque half-orc. Uh, let's see. A uh, female half-orc. I had to see what pronoun they used. Uh, she explains that their intelligence reports say that there are at least three thieves working together to pull off the operation uh, beginning at sundown, is what they suspect. Uh, she believes their target is the coin vault on the third floor, where most of uh, the establishment's earnings are stored each day. Uh, she explains the general function of the vault. Uh, it is sealed with a magic lock. Uh, narrow chutes, each six inches in diameter, extend from the inside of the vault to dispensers on the lower floors, and only casino employees can access these dispensers, which they must do so before doling out winnings to the patrons. Um, let's see. Uh, she wants at least two of you stationed right outside the coin vault. Uh, so however you would arrange that, uh, Probably Lucas. <laughs> for anyone, any of you that don't have uh, convenient ways of communicating with each other at a distance, she does have earrings of message to lend you for this uh, mission. Um, oh, good. She says she demands that you use force only if necessary and only non-lethal. They and they they want to take these thieves alive. Um. And then it just uh, breaks down how that goes. It would have some of you, like, you know, down on the game, on the casino floor, just kind of keeping an eye on people. Uh, breaks down. Each floor is patrolled by four of the casino guards wearing the uh, the dark gray and gold. I believe was their was their uniform colors. Um, the vault is forged of gleaming steel. Uh, the cylindrical vault is in the middle of the third floor in full view from any direction, so no one can approach without being seen. Um, it's trapped if anybody tries to get in without the master key. Uh, let's see. It says, whatever trap is on it can't be disarmed, but a dispel magic could uh, suppress it. Um... Okay. Yeah, and it gets into like there there are three thieves. There's one of them, uh there's a human uh, masquerading as a casino patron. Um a human, there's a half elf with a hat of disguise also pretending to be a patron. And their leader uh is a tiefling who has gotten a job working one of the casino's card tables uh, for about the past month or so. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary to go into their whole plan because there's like a whole breakdown of what their plan is and how how you guys could detect them and try to stop it. Um, they have a it's it's kind of clever. They have like a potion of gaseous form to go up the coin shoots the one with the hat of disguise pretends to be the uh the security captain uh to open the door so that the other one can get out and then there's the the possible a chase scene through the streets if they get out and you realize it um so yeah i don't know if there if there's anything more we want to do with that necessarily um, there is the small chance like if they had uh, tried to run away and you caught up to them uh, they would try to buy you off with some of the gold they stole well we're getting no. paid a lot more money to money and information to not let them run away with money so <laughs> yep 
Plus, you know, d- depending on how irritated Amelia would get at the idea of Arno being the one to protect her precious vault, that that's payment enough for Arno. So does this imply that they do successfully break into the vault, though? Let's see. I think it uh, we, c- we could do just some uh, just some checks. Um, let's see. Who would be patrolling the casino floor looking for anybody shady? Lucas would be muscle up top, probably. I would say Ix is probably the one keeping an eye out. Yeah, her passive perception and stuff would probably be the best. Heather agrees, but her sound isn't coming through for some reason. It's not. Uh, oh, I heard that. I hear you now. I'm doing push to talk. All right. I hate this fucking headset. Yes, it's <laughs> <Ix would laughs> patrol around. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they want two of us up top, so Lucas is one of the two people guarding the the vault. I don't right. know who the other person is, but she said she wants two of us there. So, so Ix, Should it if be you could... Arno would know the. Vault. And that makes defi- sense. Definitely won't be a distraction for Lucas. Nope, Lucas is on a mission. <laughs> you gotta go. Uh, We're going to roll stars. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and roll insight just to scan the crowd uh, on the game floor. Nineteen. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, you see uh, one of the patrons at the dice table. Uh, seems very disinterested in the game they're actually playing. Um, and you can see uh, the the half-elf that seems to be uh, watching somebody from over the shoulder of the guard. So you people kind of make an eye contact and not really uh, paying too much attention to their game, the games they're playing. Yeah, Ix would take that information and, of course, let Ben and Thorn know, because I'm sure they're patrolling around as well, just so that way they can clap an eye on him too while we wander about. Could we? And, oh, yes. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't want to rush this along, but since we already know the gist of everything, could we just leave it to a series of checks? That, that's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was the plan, is rush it along just with some checks. Uh, anybody who knows thieves can't and is on the floor. What a, does anybody have a, a high passive perception, and no thieves can't? I have a sixteen passive. Oh wait, but I, I have one can't. of Never those mind. two things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thorn, you. I, noticed... I I actually do not know thieves can't. I misremembered. Ah. Gotcha. My passive perception is twelve for what that's worth, but yeah, I do know thieves can't. Gotcha. Well, so, but Thorn has seen Thieves Can't because Ben showed. So even if he can't read it, he might be able to. I think it, unless it's it. being spoken. Yeah, it, it changes. Ah. Okay. I I will say uh, Thorn notices like once X notices some suspicious people, Thorn catches them making hand signals to each other, and once it's pointed out to Ben. Uh, ben can confirm uh, that they are uh, making signals for the heist. Check that out, guys. Those guys are shady. Uh, at one point, they, they try to uh, start a fight, which the uh, the security head comes over to break up and uh, Thorn and Ix uh, since you know who to watch for you notice one of the thieves lifts a key off of the security captain while they're distracted breaking up the fight yep it's time to apprehend I feel like that would be enough that we wouldn't want this to go any further yeah alright so yeah, we'll, we'll say that is, that is the point uh, at which you are able to apprehend uh let's see i didn't pay attention to what their names are and it's referring to them by their names um let's see we don't need to know their names they're just yeah, useless they ass thieves <laughs> they suck at this <laughs> <laughs> this takes 
days, sometimes weeks, and funding, and then they botch it day on the day of. Oh my god! <laughs> Not uh, even just that they botch it; they fucked up so bad that they knew what their plan was. Oh yeah, they were found out before, and how many people were involved, and they were being so obvious. No. I mean, it's sure nice that they're friends of the consortium because otherwise, I'd be saying the consortium hired some shitty thieves mm. to get paid extra money from their oh, friends. Hey, hey! Pretty good gig, if you ask me. Who hey, needs friends when you can get money bags? Right. And then they're even more indebted to them because, well, we protected you against the thieves that we hired. That's just me making assumptions because the consortium's a piece of shit, but you know. It's true. Okay, just for just for fun, I'll I'll say uh while you're keeping an eye on the suspicious people, the um the tiefling who got the job as a card dealer uh has gone over to one of the coin shoots. Uh, just nonchalantly pretending to go collect some winnings. Uh, but those with the, the highest passive perceptions uh, do see her like very quickly and thinking she's not noticed. Most people don't notice her. Uh, she does down her potion, uh, turns into a gaseous form, and goes up the coin chute. And then uh, the security captain breaks up the fight, and you witness the uh, master key being stolen. So two of them are just right there. Uh, and spoilers, they have relatively low CR uh, stat blocks. And the one that has actually a kind of high CR stat block is now locked in the vault. With nobody to let her out. Fantastic. Yeah. Ah. Yeah apprehend the two on the floor again with non-lethal force using the key as the evidence for the reason that we're doing this uh -huh. right. red-handed yep and then uh heading back up to the vault with the real security head and whoever else was a part of it and just being like whoever you want is behind that door now <laughs> like they're not going anywhere Okay. When the uh, when the vault is opened, uh, the uh, actually yeah, when the vault door is opened, there doesn't appear to be anyone inside. But Lucas and Arno, your friends, have told you now that there is somebody inside. Mm -hmm. So fairy fire. They're probably in. They're probably invisible. Oh, fairy fire, biatch. Uh, Arno, Arno fairy fires the entire inside of the vault, which fits within the area of effect. And there's a sparkly tiefling waiting to be captured. Boom. Done and done. So, hooray, you finished an entire mission. <laughs> Woohoo! Guys, that was Wee! so simple. Good job, everyone. That was some really good team. <laughs> I liked it. That's a very, very uh, abridged Reverse Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> it's fun. So, uh, Captain Nadosi, thanks you uh, for your assistance. Uh, Does uh, Ophelia thank us for our assistance? Ah, uh, yes. No, uh, Amelia is probably there. So, yeah, there's some there's some snark from Amelia. It's like, nobody's going to break into my vault. You should see this thing. Oh, you have seen it, so you should know. Uh, so she seems wholly unconcerned that anybody is going to break into her vault. And uh, she... If someone does. Yeah, Arno would 100% point out, like, mm, darling sister, someone did break into your vault. Yes, but you caught them immediately. Yes, but that is still a weak point. If we didn't know about the plan beforehand, there was no security there. Well, just a note. That's that's on their security for getting the key almost lifted off of them, isn't it? Oh my goodness! The vault is fine. 
Can um, I can argue about this? <laughs> Just tell Daddy he needs to up his game, that's all. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Money, please, <laughs> before we get kicked out. <laughs> but yes, the uh, the security captain gives you the agreed upon seven hundred fifty gold, um, and I believe yeah she she would tell you that uh, uh, five hundred of that is for the consortium and the rest is for you for the successful job well done. Oh wait, what? Was that actually part of the deal? Yeah, he said that out loud. Oh, he did I say, didn't, a didn't say bit how much of it is supposed to go to the consortium. He did not say how much of that bit, but he did tell us t tell you in advance that well, the consortium gets to share the profits. That's fair. That's fair. That's a lot of goddamn consortium. They better give Wait. me good information <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> Wait, how? Okay, how much are we getting, and how much is supposed to go to the consortium? We're getting two fifty. Plus the two fifty we already got. So we're getting Bob paid Friday. a total of a hundred gold each. That, each. That is bullshit. I think I think Jess is correct in that the consortium are the people that set this heist up <laughs> so that they could profit mm -hmm. off of protecting it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm telling you, we go we go back, we're in some spot that like we're just hanging out drinking, but it's just us. And Lucas will absolutely drop this in canon. Like yeah. that is his hundred percent. He's had plenty of time standing in front of that vault to think about this. He just like drops it over a drink. Like, yeah. They probably did this just so they, they can make money. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, or they're testing the security for a later heist. They're gonna double dip. Probably. Probably. Uh huh. Fuck well, at any at any rate, uh, the thieves are apprehended um, a little ways into the night. Uh, was after sundown that they enacted their plan and got themselves caught. Um, so you have been given the money. You can decide whether to try... Well, actually, no. The the first eclipse is right across the street. I forgot about that. So, yeah. Well, I think we are close to the end of our time. We can go back to the first eclipse now, or you can take some time to decide out of character what it is you want to do from here with the money you were just given. I mean, personally, um, Thorn is still waiting on that information, so I'm not going to try and fuck them off, like, fuck them over with the money. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, when he goes back, if they don't have the information he wants, he can be like, well... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. You don't even need to say it. <laughs> yeah, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> you information and then I'll pay you. No, that makes sense because the the reason we wanted to get involved in the consortium in the first place wasn't monetary gain necessarily. It was information they might have that the other places didn't publicly. Yeah. So. Yep. Plus, I don't want to burn any bridges with Ty yet until I get to punch him in the face. That's that awesome. too. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, just I'd, I'd say we'd bring it. A thorn would bring it with him. Like, yeah, like Bath said. I feel like the party, um, like Thorn doesn't want to like bring everybody in. I want to keep it to the single point of contact. But like, yep. if everybody wants to like wait out across the street or whatever, <laughs> like... Ixwood for sure. Yeah. Do we have? I mean, we're all here. So. Yeah. yeah. Do we have time to get into that at the tail end of this? Yeah, we could do that briefly. Okay, so yeah, Thorn will come in. He will do the usual of going to the bar, etc. Okay, uh, the the bar is still open, and the uh, the bartender is still there. He sees you come in, uh, takes in your uh, demeanor, nods without saying anything, and uh, still the same patron. Opens the. Uh... 
Secret door. Opens the secret door. Also, he would note that patron, but thank you. Um, yes, I'll go through the secret entrance. And does it tie? Let's see, I'm checking one thing. Uh, yes, it is tie one more time. Like, he, uh, sees you walk in, uh, sees the, uh, I presume you have, uh, the, the bag of gold. Yeah, we would have taken out our earnings, which is 50 per person, just so everybody knows. Thank um, you. And, uh... Thorn will hand it to him and just go, you have 500 gold. Uh, I take it then you were successful, so that is good news. It's a startlingly easy job. Let's see. He he kind of mm, give gives a small uh, huff of amusement. As long as the consortium gets its money, it doesn't matter how easy it was. We're not going to complain. And no complaints from me either. As long as I get my information. Let's see, let me pull up one thing. I've I've been reading and and uh rereading a lot of things, so I I have to go find real quick one more thing. Ah, no. Ah. Bad control button, bad. I keep forgetting. Typing letters while holding the control button is also a bad idea. Okay, uh, so Ty, uh, when you indicate that you are wanting the information you had asked for, and he better have it, um, he does hand you an envelope uh, with a, a red wax seal on it and indicates that you're welcome to open it now or later. I'm opening it now. I'm not walking away and finding out that this is bullshit. <laughs> like... This just says his name and how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you uh, scanning it to make sure it's not bullshit. Um, you do find a handwritten collection of information uh, regarding what is apparently known as the Vault of Shumas. Uh, S-H-U-M-A-S for anybody who is writing notes. Um, and I, I will uh, compile this for Thorn later as well once I have more time to uh, put some thought to it while people yeah. aren't waiting on me to speak. Um, but yes, it does have uh, the name of the vault, some of the information you already knew, which at least confirms that we were talking about the same place. Um, there is not a map with the exact location, but it is, uh, it seems more specific and confident, uh, in a location than anything you found previously. So rather than it's somewhere in this entire mountain range, it's more like uh, it is believed to be like within this pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so a location, uh, there is mention of creatures that are believed to be there. Um, 
including a spirit known as the caregiver, uh, which I think you may have gotten that before, but it speaks in a little more detail on what the caregiver may be. I actually and don't think I got that before, but... <laughs> very good. Um, yes, the uh, the caregiver who watches over the sleeping children of Zahir. Okay. Within the vault. I don't know what that means, but that don't sound right at all. Like, right? scary thing. Yeah. Like, mm, Suspicious! That could have been worded differently. <laughs> sleeping children of Zahir. Oh boy. Anything else? Uh, there is a little more information, and it seems to be things that you had not entirely knew already. Okay. So this could, if it is accurate, this could uh, point you to the vault with a little bit of searching at the location. Thorn, uh, well, smile, it is, it's like a, a dangerously edged smile, I think, but it is a genuine smile, um, all the same, uh, and we'll look at Ty and go, thank you, should you need a mercenary in the future, well, you know where to find me, don't you? We always know where to find you, he confirms. <laughs> With a little bit of an edge to his own. Do not like that either. There, there are implications that are not even attempted to be hidden. Yeah. Well, I look forward to the show in two days' time. We shall see. I won't say anything more on that topic. Um, and I'll leave and go meet the party. Uh -huh. Hi, Thorn. Is your, is your envelope folded back up and put away? Oh, absolutely. Well, we're done here. Let's get a drink. Fuck yeah. Give you what you needed. Oh yes, you did. It's actually pretty useful. Well, all right. And with that, uh, the party heads back to the Foolish Serpent to wind down for the evening, have whatever after-session RP they wish to have, and we will conclude for today.